Hello everyone, my name is Draconic Rose and welcome back to another episode of Wild to Learn. Today we are continuing on our task tree into Heritage Protection from the National Heritage, National Heritage Protection System. Good morning, we have dozens of scientific equipment placed in protected areas for the sake of looking after the objects of National Heritage. We are parsing info from our equipment on a daily basis and need to sort it depending on the color of the report. The color of the report? Can you make a program that will help us? So this is basically to get us uh, using the decision tree, uh, quite obviously. So um, the problem with the decision tree is that um, you can only decide between two colors, right? So, red and blue... Hmm, what does this one do? Uh, red, blue, oh, and the greens go... Okay, so that's basically what we want. So we do want to get the... Not that one, this one. And those things will uh, go into... Uh, red and green, and then we go into blue and green. So, uh, actually the other way around. Green, blue. Uh, and that's just to make the connections a little easier. So red uh, and blue. Uh, if it's red, it goes up. If it's green, it goes to the middle. If it's green, it goes to the middle. If it's blue, it goes down. And that should be the thing here. Exactly, so that was our task here. We got Buku Bucks uh, and we are going to continue on to Accuracy. Need harder machine learning job. Level up maybe? Hi friends, it's me again. Uh, Heller, Hellraiser, uh, thanks for those jobs. I can now afford a meal almost daily, but I need a kick-butt video card to proceed with my task. Ergo, I need more money. So am I ready for a more hardcore job, maybe? Uh, little coders grow up so fast. No problem, my dude, Reno. I'll send you some more contracts your way, with bigger data too. Beware, in these tasks, you're allowed to make some mistakes, but they're way more tricky to crack. Uh, how so? This is real life data science for you. Corrupted data, incorrect data, useless data. When it comes to big numbers, it's not about being 100% correct. It's about getting the job done, Sonny. Alright, so let's take a look here. So we have 24 of each color. We have the red and blue and not... Um, no custom one, so I guess we're making ourselves a new thing. Uh, well, you know, uh, the blue ones is, is are going to yeah. The blue ones are going to be our errors, so it's not like, um, yeah. It's not like uh, we have much to do there, so let's go into solvency assessment. Good afternoon. We represent the Money Bag Bank. We want you to create a system for sorting candidates applying for loans. We believe that cold, soulless mind of a machine will help us save more money than our regular, empathy corrupted human clerks. We would very much appreciate it if you'd complete the task before the holidays. Proceed. Semi supervised learning. Semi supervised, I mean. Semi-supervised learning is used on partially unlabeled data with unknown answers. Typically, a machine learning model predicts answers for unlabeled data and uses this prediction to improve. This method can improve quality of the model even when the data is not completely reliable. In real life, adding 5-10% to of unlabeled data leads to minor quality improvement and adding more data of this type spoils the model. Uh, okay. I did not understand most of that, but basically we have class A, which is a doggo, class B, which is a cat, and some unlabeled data, which is the raccoon. Uh, and we get um, the raccoon predicted as class B cat, and this cat also predicted as class B. So 
to more wave in the cat's favor, I guess. Uh, so here we have two nodes to get. Ah, yeah, so that, uh, okay. So I guess we do reds up, blues go down. I'm assuming the greens will be more uh, predicted as well. I guess if we do green, because there's more green and less blue, we can do uh, green and blue. What do we do with the blues then? Hmm. Well, let's see how that goes. So blues are going up as well, uh, which is expected. Uh, but it's not accurate enough. So what? All right, it looks like this uh, works this way. So if it's red, go up. If it's anything other than red, go down. And then we decide over there. Now we can't throw away the blues because we do not have the trash can. Uh, I suppose we could have used this one, but uh, we'll just go with this for now. Output stream 3. Is there like an output stream 2? Uh, but that's okay, that gets us the gold and um, the money that we need. Alright, so... Um, let's say we might need a new graphics card, so I guess we could go to our upgrade stuff, uh, head to the hardware and just start buying things. Well, here's a graphics card so we can buy it. Uh, another graphics card, that's better. Uh, more FPS for the FPS something. Uh, and I guess we will stop right there, so the block speed is good. Now I can buy hide in room. Uh, okay. Tambourine increases data transfer speed. Okay. Uh, and we'll buy this. Well, fine. Let's just, just just keep buying things because we can. There we go. Bot, bot. And we'll keep buying things right up as we can get it. Good. Alright, so that should be good for hardware. Let's go back to our task tree and check Raging Birds. Raging Birds from the Sky. Dear Computer Specialist, you gotta help me. I own a miniature pig farm and also have a crazy neighbor. He enjoys making bird-shaped shells out of papier-mâché and throw them at my piggy's sheds. He makes all kinds of shells. Tiny red round ones, triangular, the square ones, you name it. I'm constantly rebuilding my shed, so they would be impenetrable by those birds, but I need to be able to know the shapes of shells that Wacko's using. Can you please write an algorithm for that? I don't know how knowing the shapes helps you, but... Okay, so now we are going to be using the sift node and we can get up to seven. Oh wow, that's um... That's a lot, isn't it? So we have 20 rounds, 100 squares and 60 triangles. So we can immediately go if rounds go up. Uh, do I want a bell? Oh, probably actually. Um, all right, let me uh, get through this and then I'll explain my thought process. All right, this one took me a little bit of a thought and experimentation, but in the end we got there. So the idea here is um, that the only shape that actually matters is the triangle, as it's the only one that needs to be isolated. So, um, and we only, we, only, we blah, blah. We need 90% accuracy on the triangle, but everything else, like any shape you put here, it's going to be 100% accuracy. Uh, over here, you only need 50% accuracy, so that means if triangles get here, but if only circles and squares get here, you get 100% anyway. 
So what really matters is the quantities and the fact that you need 90% um, accuracy on the triangles. So what we are doing is we're dividing the input stream into four, uh, just for processing speed sake, and even then it's uh, not that good. Um, and then we send them to sift, which are only picking triangles. So all of the sifts, if they get a triangle, they send it to the triangle only output. So we are going to get a 100% accuracy here, and we are getting all the triangles here, though we quote unquote only need 40. Uh, that doesn't matter because we have 120 of the other shapes. So about um, 60, uh, I think, uh, will come into this one. So that's more than enough for the 30 that we need here. And um, another, uh, no, not 60, um, yeah, 60, that's half. And another 60 are going to go up uh, and be divided in two, basically. And that's more than enough to complete the 20 here and 10 here that we need. And there's extras, but it doesn't really matter. So if I do the test run, you will see that the sifts do clog up a bit and that's what's taking most of our time here but slowly everything fills up nice and easy and we get all of the metrics up in the green so we can continue on your funds are insufficient even for buying cat food but today only and now only you can take a loan from the last chance bank they'll give us that and uh, they'll expect us to return double so oh we can only agree <laughs> positively or negatively well that sucks i guess i went a little bit too far with buying hardware and stuff achievement unlocked error stack overflow and achievement unlock half a year a something something you can check my steam page if you'd like to know those achievements so let's continue on Elite Conference. Greetings! Our scientific conference provides several lecture halls for visitors to meet famous scientists. We would like to separate VIP badge holders from the rest, but unfortunately VIP halls have a very limited capacity. Therefore, some of the premium badge holders will have to be sent to regular halls. We have a terminal that helps visitors find the way to the respective room, but it has to be updated. Would you kindly do that for us? So let's try that. Alright, so... We have a bunch of shapes and we have to... Well, it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Um, okay, and we have a color and a sift. So the, the uh, color... The color. The shape that matters to us is the circles. I think those would be the VIP uh, groups. We have RGB sort, which... Um, I guess, or are the greens the VIPs? Something like that. And of course we have the shape division. Hmm. Well, I'll have to give it some thought and I will be back with the solution. Alright, this one actually turned out to be pretty easy. So, uh, we don't really care all that much about shape. We mostly care about the color. So any shape, as long as they're the color green, can go into this output stream. So we right away grab a decision tree for color and we separate the greens and that's pretty easy. Any other shape goes up and we use the balancer just to uh, divide them and get some speed. And up here that's where we get to care about the shape. So we know that we won't have any greens but that doesn't matter because we have more than enough of the other color. So what is that we care here? Well it's the shape. So we are separating the circles from the other shapes. So circles go up and the other shapes uh, go uh, down. And in that manner we get... Da -da -da -da, all the grains filling up here and because we've chosen any here some are also going up but it doesn't matter because we don't care about the color we care about the shape so that is our release we get some money which we will need because of our loan 
Uh, and we get to continue on. So, predict the presidential election. Good morning. I need to know who to vote for. Can you predict the winner of the next presidential election? I will send you a big database. So, now our thing is that we need to deal with a lot of uh, data and fast. Uh, so, again, I'm going to take a good look here. Uh, and I will be back with the solution. All right, I am running out of time and out of ideas. So I'm brute forcing this on a bit, we'll get silver, but other than throwing better hardware at it, I am not entirely sure how we can get gold. If you know or have any ideas, do please leave a comment and let me know. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll come back at the end and try and get gold medal on all of these. But the idea here is simple. We want the blues. Now, our data is big. It's, it's 386 notes uh, or inputs, but the reds are pretty much negligible. It doesn't really matter where the reds go. So we only have to mind our blues and our greens. Now we need the blues basically to be our outputs. Uh, and we need to discard the green. So that's basically what we're doing. We are not caring about the reds. So we divide our inputs uh, in four and we send those four into four identical nodes. The nodes are decision trees. They pick the blues from the greens. Blues go into the output stream. Greens go into the trash can. Reds can go wherever the heck they please. It doesn't matter because at most we are going to get two reds uh, coming in here, which is more than good enough for our 80% uh, accuracy. So we are going to run that and you can see this is going and eventually once the decision trees are done, we get our occupancy, we get a 99% accuracy, which I mean pretty good. Uh, and we get a, a little bit less money than we would if we got gold. But that is fine by me. Now, here's the thing. Can I um, pay our loan? Yes, Ooh, I can. So now we get a, a good bit of money that I'm not going to use right now. Even though we can buy one hardware, uh, I think we've learned from a thing that we do not want to do that. So. Uh, we are... well, I guess the network card is the thing we want next. So let us uh, continue. We have a video. Ah, the end of the epoch. Click one of the banners to proceed to the story. So we didn't get enough gold to go through there. I suppose we could do the, uh, the optionals. Uh, but you know how I feel about that. Unless things get um, too difficult, I I am pretty sure we're just gonna keep going. So, on a basic machine. Oh yeah, right. It's uh, color type. So we're still in basic machine learning territory. So let's go to the bronze. Uh, we have a little bit more vision and uh, machine learning. But still, their science is at work. I uh, guess that's a smile, maybe? Uh, uh, 146% <laughs> Terminator, maybe? Well, an effort was made. Uh, base cat emotion recognition, not done. Alright, so let's go to genetic algorithms. Cat emotions recognition part 2. Okay, I'm out of ideas. Half a time the cat's emotion is recognized as proud and classy, it's the time my cat is usually licking unspeakable parts of its body. I guess it feels real classy while doing so, but what if I'm wrong? Try the genetic algorithm. Gene's rule. Wait, or was it Jin? Or maybe a genie? I gotta check it out. Genetic algorithm is the answer, but you need multiple cats to properly train it. Jeez, you guys are so stuck in the 80s. Draconic girls came back. Come back when you are sick of waiting for millions of years while neural selection works its magic. Worked with carbon-based life forms, didn't it? Uh, right. 
New genetic solver in the game. Train model in a training run till the evolve button lights up, then click on it. It creates a clone with modified error, positive or negative. In the real world, one of the most powerful self-learning non-neural algorithms. It simulates biological evolution process, proliferation, mutation and extinction. Only solutions which are close to the optimum can survive. I have actually programmed one of these. Uh, it's pretty pretty basic. Uh, so we are going to use the genetic solver uh, to get the things in exit, do a training run until it evolves, evolve. Uh, I guess I have to do that manually and we, I, I guess, delete the older one. And we continue on. Uh, too many nodes. Okay, so I just uh, really do have to delete the older one. Do I have to go through? Oh no, it keeps uh, resetting the, the input. So we keep going. There we go. So now uh, I think we can do the test run because we are in the green. There we go. Continue. So now we have uh, two um, branches. Task with real RL. Uh, okay. And this one is not. So let's go with ah reinforcement learning. Uh, hello, you make good car, but why humans drive car to tune it? Please make computers learn itself. We don't have many human drivers, but we have many cars. Yours, daughter, me meow cats, human person, right? Yes, in reinforcement learning tasks, nodes work in a bit different way. All data is initially unspecified, and your task is to recognize it and transmit it to the reinforcement learning agent, the AI. So we are going to use the sift uh, with roads and not roads, I suppose, and recognize data in the input and classifies them either as either an object or as a road. Okay, uh, the sift is one of the most powerful, right, uh, we already know that. So all we're going to need is to do that and take it there, I guess. So it just uh, tells us uh, what kind of things we have. So uh, save, I suppose, tune. Genetic algorithm is a subcategory of supervised learning method. It works pretty much like natural selection does in real life. The quote unquote species crossbreed, multiply and mutate. In theory, after many iterations, this could give birth to the perfect specimen, or so we hope. Okay, target average speed. The goal in this type of tasks is to make the AI quote-unquote clever enough to be able to reach a target average speed level. Each iteration of learning, an epoch, contains several solutions regulated by population size parameter. At the end of an epoch, only the best solutions get to survive and multiply. The genetic algorithm is not too stable, pretty much like natural selection, so if you feel that your car is not making much progress, you can try generating a new population, just make sure to not overuse this feature. So we have cars, uh, we can set a new seed and we can train it, uh, and when it gets to, the model has achieved the target speed level. Uh, okay, so I'm not entirely sure what we're supposed to deal with it here. Alright, so when it sees an obstacle, it's supposed to move. When it sees a road, uh, it keeps going. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, we get some money for it, I guess that's what uh, we care about. Uh, I don't think I like those tasks, so let's go with chess bot. Uh, chess bot for training Gasparov. Hi! As you may know, Gasparov is to compete with AI chess computer next month. Can you write a chess bot for training? World Champion vs Genetic Algorithm One of the greatest chess games of all time, without a doubt, was the battle between Garry Kasparov and the Deep Blue Supercomputer by IBM uh, I1997. 
The first game was very difficult and tense. Kasparov had an advantage at first, but starting from move 44, many believed that he ceased to understand the logic of the computer and in the end lost the entire game. You can use custom notes to make a task easier, they can include notes that you have already trained on earlier levels. So uh, from now on the, the notes will be pre-trained, so I suppose to be red, green, blue, okay, so uh, red and green and blue, okay, the reds want to go to two places, so we can do that. Uh, let's do a test run and see what we get. Uh, should be more than enough. Yeah, okay. So that was a success. We will release. We got a bunch more money, which I think... Hey, have you seen our shop yet? Why earn money if you're not spending money? You've got cool hardware. Yes, exactly. That's where I wanted to go to get our gentle network card to increase our data transfer speed and hopefully make nodes easier to do things with. But unfortunately, that is all the time I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to lick, to lick, to click that like button, press subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoy what I am doing here, check out my Patreon, uh, where you can support me for as little as one dollar a month but until next episode please remember that here uh, there be dragons thank you so much to my patrons for making this channel possible click the patreon logo to become one of these fine folk and if you enjoyed the video here are some more youtube things you would like don't forget to like this video and subscribe have a lovely day and i'll see you next time